Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Endless Runner tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be showing you how you can set up a dev and a uh, dev system and with this dev system we are going to be using ragdoll physics. So what I mean by that is when you overlap one of your pipes or one of your boxes what it's going to do is basically make your player trip over on the ground and fall over to the ground to show them that they have died. So having said that, what we're going to do is dive straight into it and get started. Now, the first thing that we're going to need for our third person character is we are going to need to have a physics asset. Now, we do have one by default, but I want to introduce you to making your own one yourself. So what I'm going to do is go to my content folder, go to mannequin, go to my character folder, mesh, and then with the SK underscore mannequin, right click that and create a physics asset and make sure you press create and assign. So that way this new physics asset is going to be used. Now with this, just use the default settings as they are and press create asset. Give it a couple of seconds and you can see it has now made this for us. And what you should have open on your screen is a little bit uh, something similar to this. Now what you need to do is just go ahead and press generate all bodies and that is going to simulate and do the bits that we need to do. If we press simulate you are going to be able to see what it's going to look like if the player falls straight down on the ground and that's exactly what I'm going for. I want it to look like the character is dying when they trip over a box or run into um, you know, a pipe or anything like that. So I am happy with this and I'm going to close it. So what we've got to do now then is open up our third person character blueprint under third person BP uh, blueprints and then open it up and we can start working on the code that is going to make it simulate physics and do all the good stuff we need it to do. So, the way we're going to be doing this is within the third person character, we are going to add a function, and for the function, we are going to give this the name def function. And the purpose of making this function is so that we can simply call it from other blueprints. So, we are going to want to be able to trigger this from within the pipe blueprint, from within the box blueprint, and all of that good stuff. And within here, all we're going to be doing is telling it to pretty much simulate that physics and stop the character from moving any further. And the way that we're going to do this is first things first, we are going to set simulate physics using the mesh, just like that, and make sure this is triggered and ticked for the simulate. What we're also going to be doing is disabling so disable movement using the character movement. So what this is going to do is essentially just stop that character from moving further forwards than we need it to do. And then lastly, we're going to do one last thing, which is simply set game paused to pause the game after that. So if we compile this, we can now go ahead and test this and make sure it works. Now, we've got nothing to actually fire off this function. So what I'm going to do is a quick simple test within the event graph tab using a little input key. So I'm going to right click anywhere you've got space, go down to input, go to keyboard events, and I'm just going to use the, I'm going to use the C key on our keyboard. With that, we are simply just going to fire off the def function to make it work. So what should happen now is if we press C on the keyboard, he should uh, sort of go a little bit funny and he should drop to the ground. Now, what you will notice there is for some reason, it did crash our game. So what I'm going to do is go to our def function, double click to open this up, and you will notice it's not crashing, it's just pausing. So you're not really getting a chance to disable that movement to see the physics. So what we've got to do is maybe just take that out. You could add a delay or something like that if you want to, but I'm going to take that out, compile it, and make sure it works this time round. So press play, press C, and you can see that he now sort of looks like he's falling, but notice when I did do that, he falls through the ground, he falls through the objects, and it doesn't look too great. And the reason why it's doing that 
is because the mesh does not have proper collision at the moment. So if you go back to your viewport, select your mesh, and then scroll down on the right hand side, in the details panel, you have got your collision tab. Within here, you have your collision presets. Now what you want to do with this is set this to block all dynamic to start with and then press play. Press that C key, maybe not when you're jumping in the air. So get on the ground, press C and you can see now he is going to stop in place. He's going to block with the cubes and do all of that good stuff. It's doing exactly what we want it to do. Now, what we also need to make sure is that we are still able to pick up the pickup items, which we can. So that side of the collision is all good. We can still move into these pipes and the boxes. That is all good. So what we need to do now then is when you touch a pipe or touch a box, we simply need to tell it to play that def function. So the way we're going to do this is by going to our runner files folder go to blueprints and then let's start off with the pipe obstacle. Within here, what we're going to do is event actor begin overlap. We should have one here already. We are going to cast to the third person character to make sure it's overlapping with that character. And then as the third person character, we are simply going to type in def function and this is going to trigger that def function. So, with the static mesh within this obstacle for the pipe, you want to make sure that this is going to be block all dynamic. Sorry, you want to make sure this is overlap all so it can fire off that overlap event and you're not just stopping yourself from going into it. Press play and then as you run over it, notice it is going to trip you up and your character is going to drop down to the ground and that is essentially going to be simulating your death. So we know that's all working. So all we need to do then is just copy this, close the pipe obstacle, and we are going to go and do the same thing for the box. So open up obstacle underscore box, paste that in to so cast to third person character, use the death function and set up your object wildcard. Hit compile, hit play, and now if you walk into a box, it should kill you, but if it doesn't, that is going to be because you haven't set your static mesh collision to overlap all. Compile and let's try it again. Hit play and run into the box and you can see it is going to kill us just like that. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything I wanted to show you for your death function. We're really starting to bring our side scroller, uh, not side scroller, endless runner game to life now. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.